How's it going? Welcome back to a very special video today because we are talking about one of my favorite types of games, okay? A Souls-like, or shall I say, a souls light. Now, honestly, I'm actually not a huge fan of Souls-like games, but I absolutely love Dark Souls and I love Bloodborne. But sometimes a Souls-like game hits just Right. For example, Flintlock for Siege of Dawn. This game, I think, people need to get a little bit more excited about because I haven't really seen much people talk about it and already a lot of people are boycotting it simply because of the protagonist um, because we live in very uh, divided times right now. But as someone who's actually played it, okay, it's not, you know, woke or anything like that. So people who are saying this are just insane. So today I have for you Flintlock the Siege of Dawn review, okay? Everything that I've played and I will talk about what this game actually is because finally we're doing something different, okay? Because we have had a lot of souls like there's no denying that and a lot of people are pretty sick of them. I personally don't like many of them. Only very occasionally we get something good, um, for example, Lies of P. But honestly, I think this is going to be up there. And it's not actually a full Souls-like. I know it's branding itself that way, but that's just a way to get attention, I feel. This is much more a traditional action game with a strong story, heavy cinematics, similar to, you know, something like God of War, but the combat feels more akin to something like Remnant from the Ashes, for example, um, but with more focus on melee. Um, but honestly, this is a very heavily story-driven game. And I was surprised because this is not like a triple A game. The developers before made Ashen, if you know what that is, it's kind of like a combat Souls-like. But honestly, this is pretty polished and this is where creativity actually exists. This is what I want to support more of and this is what people should be supporting because triple A games are completely dead and they've just basically become a way to juice as much money from the consumers, you guys, as much as possible. Very linear design philosophies where they all kind of copy and borrow from each other, um, especially with open world games. No actual creative risk or passion because they are made by such huge teams, it's very difficult to communicate that type of thing with each other. Gaming is not what it used to be, okay? It used to be about pursuing art, now it's about you know, trying to capture the biggest audience as possible. So what sets it apart for me is the slow, deliberate nature of the combat and how flashy the combat actually is, okay? Um, you will be pulling off some pretty cool moves. And of course, you do have the traditional skill tree progression path, um, you know, powder or steel. Basically, you have a melee weapon and you have a ranged weapon and you can choose which kind of playstyle you want to focus on more. And you also get special abilities thanks to your little pet god companion. Yes, your little furry little friend over there. Now it seems like every game needs like a cutesy little fun companion, especially in Star Wars games. And honestly, honestly, it's kind of annoying at this point. But your little fluff ball over there isn't actually useless and it doesn't get in your way. The voice acting is actually quite good and it's not cringe inducing like some other games. I just moosh it with my mind. Perhaps our connection has somehow awoken some abilities. I just moved shit with my mind. I just keep hearing I, I, I. I just move shit with my freaking mind. <laughs> but what surprised me a lot was actually how much platforming there actually is in this game. And the combat is very flashy, okay? It is a Souls-like combat system where you lock on to an enemy and then you just, you know, attack them, um, dodge out of the way stuff like that, a little bit more Bloodborne-esque, I would say. But what surprised me most was the animations, they're really hefty and meaty. Um, and again, that's what reminds me of something similar to, you know, proper action games like the new God of War series, which I'm sure a lot of people will compare it to. Um, and also the difficulty isn't actually a Souls-like experience. You know, it can be difficult at times, but only if you're a really bad gamer, let's be honest, okay? If you can't play this, um, then I don't know what's wrong with you, <laughs> pretty much. I know, you know, everyone's different, but honestly, this, calling it a Souls-like is a bit of an insult because what makes those games so special, one of the reasons, it's so many reasons, um, from the deep metaphysical themes um, down to the gameplay being explained and actually have lore reasons, which is very rare for gaming. Of course, this doesn't really do that as well, 
but the difficulty here is very light. The art style as well, I would say, isn't the most interesting thing, but it does still have quite a nice blend of something we haven't usually seen before. Kind of reminds me of the later Fable games, where it's kind of mixing industrial, kind of early technology with medieval themes, and it's kind of New Zealand inspired. So it is quite refreshing and different in that regard. But what I really like is just how weighty the combat actually feels, how each attack feels very deliberate. And honestly, it's very telegraphed. So it reminds me heavily of something like the first Dark Souls or Dark Souls 2, much more slower, deliberate. You can easily see where the enemies are going to attack, how they're going to attack. So. In that instance, it's not like Elden Ring or any of the new Dark Souls games or other Souls likes. It's actually very easy to navigate. And this is a small negative, and I'm going to get into the positives and negatives in just a second, like I do with all of my early reviews to really break it down. The difficulty is just not that well balanced from what I've seen so far, okay? And that is because they don't have a set difficulty option. That's what makes, you know, the original Dark Souls so good. And I am going to compare this a lot because it's comparing itself a lot to Souls Likes, which is its own doing, okay? Its own marketing. Um, but honestly, it's quite different because this is much more a traditional action game, like I keep saying. So you really do need to keep that in mind. So if you are afraid of Souls Like games or you don't even like them, and that's fine, everyone's got different tastes. Don't be afraid of this because it's actually much more of just a action game. Reminds me of that other AA game that came out recently called Banishers something of the New Eden. Um, it's much more akin to something like that. They are quite obvious attacks and you should be able to time them quite nicely. But the main thing that I don't like is the fact that it doesn't have a set difficulty option. You get three different choices of difficulty options and even a story mode. Um, and if a game balances itself by having multiple options of difficulty, it's not going to be a fine tuned experience like something with one set difficulty option, either being easy or hard somewhere in between um, and honestly I think that really hurts games when they have lots of difficulty options. I know it's a standard now but if people really stop and think about it not every game needs to be for everyone and the fact that you have these wide difficulty options unless if it's really thorough and it gives you lots of customization it actually just dilutes the experience because it's very difficult to actually get a balanced game um, when it has so many difficulty options. Now before we jump into the positives and negatives for this Flintlock for Siege of Dawn review, I will quickly just say do consider subscribing if you are new because that would mean so so much to me, you have no idea. I put everything that I am into this channel. I am so so passionate about my community here, what we're building. I have an awesome live stream community that I've just started this month uh, streaming on basically Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for Americans uh, evening time. So make sure you join that. I really do like that and I'm having a blast with it. But honestly, I just love this community so much. The wise ones are just very, you know, respectful, intelligent. That's what I'm trying to build here. So if you like deep video game analysis, that actually has something of value, I believe, not just regurgitating the story of the game, but actually looking deep at it and its themes, or philosophical videos, you are in the right place. Just subscribe, become a wise one. I would really appreciate it and I'm happy to have you. And if you do find yourself enjoying this video at any point, please do consider supporting me because I have gone full-time recently on YouTube, which is a big risk for a channel my size. But if you do consider supporting me, honestly, you are awesome and it means so much to me. You will get shout outs in the videos. Um, at the end of the videos as well. So please do consider that by dropping a donation on PayPal or on YouTube, thanks. That's how I can actually keep doing this as a full-time thing, which is very difficult right now. And hopefully soon I've got something in the works where I can actually give back to you guys, the subscribers. I'm not doing some kind of, you know, grifty giveaway that lots of YouTubers do. No, I just want to give back to you because honestly, you guys, really do mean a lot to me. So thank you so much if you do support my show. So the only ways that I can really see that this is actually a Souls-like game is the fact that when you die, you drop your currency, okay? And basically you have to go back to your body to pick it back up. When you rest at campfires, yes, a little bit different from bonfires, basically then you reset all the enemies. Um, and like I said, I really do like the kind of nice blend of medieval mixed with this kind of more technology, 
magic approach that they're going for, which I really like, because then you get the best of all three worlds, for example, you know, you get the melee combat, you get the ranged combat with guns, and then you get magic abilities thanks to your little god companion. So all of that is pretty cool. But how it differs is actually this has kind of an action game system. I'm not going to go as far and say it's Devil May Cry, but you do have this thing called a reputation meter, and the more combos you do, the more lands that you hit without getting hit, the more reputation that you get, and then you can use this as a kind of currency, and you can use this to basically buy weapons in safe locations and stuff like that, and it's actually different from your kind of leveling up stats, which you get from defeating bosses and all that kind of stuff. So it's got quite a few different mechanics here, which I quite like. So a big positive for me was for platforming. It does kind of remind me of something like Jedi Survivor. This is a mixed bag of many different ideas. That's why it's quite creative. Um, the platforming sometimes does look a little bit stupid. You literally throw a grenade to boost yourself up. And at times it is a little bit finicky. It's not as like smooth as something like an arcane game or Dishonored. Also, you can jump around by doing teleportation, but these are actual set points. You can't just freely teleport. So a small negative here is I would say that the main character is actually pretty weak. It's not as bad as something that I've seen before in other games, recent games, um, with a female protagonist that just are cringe inducing. It's just a little bit boring. Um, I don't really feel super engaged, but bear in mind that this Flintlock The Siege of Dawn review is based on the early gameplay and what I've played so far. But a positive here is that the other side characters are quite interesting. Even your little companion, there's good chemistry between you two, which I really like. Um, and the fact that basically some of the shopkeepers are pretty cool. So it's got a simple Souls-like combat, but the story and focus of this game is much more akin to, like I said, an action traditional game where it's almost a linear story. And thank God that it's not a bloated open world game, okay? These are hub open worlds. Um, and what I mean by that is basically when you progress through, think of Star Wars Jedi Survivor, that's a good example. Um, basically you land on a map and these are big open sections of the map that you can freely explore and they might have towns in them, for example, and you have to actually kind of cleanse the town area to unlock side quests. That's how you actually get side missions is by clearing out the main boss in that area and then it unlocks a little bit of a kind of open world design approach even though it's not open world fully which I think is quite interesting but that does feel like padding a lot of the time and basically you know that's how you talk to side NPCs and get different objectives and stuff like that and that's how you basically unlock the shops or little cafes they call them um, where you can basically upgrade your weapons and buy and barter all of that kind of stuff. The amount of enemy variation that I've seen so far with the hands-on early gameplay stuff is quite refreshing and it's not actually too bad. It's still not something amazing. You get the kind of traditional zombie kind of knights, um, but you also do get uh, quite a good variation of enemy types. And the bosses, like I said, I think a lot of people will be unimpressed by the bosses because we've seen so many games now especially in the Souls-like genre that have done amazing boss battles. And this one feels very last gen. And what I mean by that is there's just not enough stages. Um, they feel very sluggish, very predictable. Um, but for people who aren't a big fan of Souls-like combat, but want, you know, a good story-rich game with a similar vibe to Souls-like combat, you know, if you've never managed to get into it properly, this has a nice blend of both because, like I said, the combat it's much more action focused, much more flashy and lots of great animations and stuff like that. More slow and deliberate, akin to God of War, but it still does have that essence of a Souls-like game. So it's an interesting take on the genre. So if you're not really used to fighting tons and tons of bosses and you're not a massive Souls fan, then I think you'll still enjoy the bosses, but they just have been done better in other games. The gameplay does have some nice verticality to it, which I like because you can platform and jump around mid-combat as well, which you can't really do in a Souls game. So like I said, it's quite different from how it plays. Um, but I do like the abilities on offer. You can make enemies levitate and all of this kind of stuff. So you basically get to choose which path you want to go down. You know, the melee route, the kind of mage route, or the ranged kind of, you know, shooter 
which I like. Um, obviously, I can't say you can rely on one playstyle, you do need to mix them up, but I do like that you get agency in which one you prefer. Some cool little additions to this game, I've said, you know, how I'm not a big fan of this kind of um, mini open world sections, kind of borrowing elements from big open world games, like I said, clearing out camps to basically unlock the content that should just be there to begin with. Um, that can be a little bit repetitive and grindy at times, but if it's just focusing on fighting the main boss, it's not that bad, but usually you have to, you know, basically there's a lot of padding in between that. But when you do get access to these kind of friendly areas, that's when the game really unlocks and has a lot of charm to it, and it feels quite immersive and lived in, um, which I like. The sound design is nice and crunchy, the music is nothing amazing, but it does set the tone quite nicely for this kind of weird it's not super dark fantasy, like I said, it's a very hybrid blend of fantasy, which is quite interesting, and the music does a good job of capturing that, but little, um, you know, kind of quality of life stuff that I found, which did surprise me, you can even play a mini game and a mini card game of their own creation, which is pretty cool, and stuff like that is very nice. Some other creative gameplay elements and mechanics that they've added, which I just appreciate a lot because not many games really care about movement or making movement interesting. For example, if there's a slight slope anywhere, you can just slide down it by holding down a dedicated button for it, which is pretty cool. The critical finishes are also very flashy and nice. You can break the enemy's stance, um, you know, do parries and stuff like that. So there is a lot going on here, but it's just a very jumbled bag of different ideas grabbed from other games, and it doesn't do any one of them particularly amazingly well, to be honest, but when it all comes together, it's a pretty satisfying package, I would say. The story is pretty, um, I would say, generic from what I've seen so far. Like I said, this isn't based on the full release, um, that's why it's an early review. I do a full breakdown analysis of my yearly reviews for games that I really love, um, not just looking at games that are coming out, obviously, but so far the story hasn't exactly gripped me, it's a little bit generic, you know, a story of a wartime feud and basically your family getting caught up in the middle of it, that's all I'll say for now. And there's only been a few bugs that I've encountered, like enemies getting stuck um, and just kind of glitching out, not really fighting you or anything like that. All in all, Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, I would say that this game is quite interesting and pretty refreshing, but it just feels like a little bit of a mixed bag because it's taking so many different ideas um, and it doesn't quite commit to one to make it really feel like it stands out, but as an experimental kind of story, linear to a degree action focused game with Souls-like combat, um, I think that this is quite interesting actually, and if you're looking for just like a kind of you know, adventure to go on that you just progress through and, you know, a nice story along with it where it's not cringe-inducing characters. Honestly, this is actually a quite a good game, um, but I wouldn't say if you're a massive Souls-like fan, you're going to get the challenge that you want from this, and maybe if you're just looking for a story action adventure game, um, this might turn you off because of the Souls-like combat, but if you are a fan of both, then this is actually a perfect blend, and I think it's actually a very good game, just a little bit um, all over the place. I do hope you enjoyed my Flintlock for Siege of Dawn review. Flintlock for Siege of Dawn game review. Looking at this one early because I think most people aren't really going to pay attention to this, which is a shame because this is what we need to support more of. Yes, it doesn't do everything perfectly, but still it's trying to do different things, which I appreciate a lot, and that's what we need in the gaming industry. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the Flintlock for Siege of Dawn review. And like I said, please do consider supporting or subscribing if you are new to the channel. Thank you for my continuous wise ones for coming back and watching the channel and again shout out to people like Daniel and Zeno the producer for supporting the show and I'll see you in the next video have a great day peace out